what you see in the details of mesh right here are the global mesh controls. These settings apply to the whole mesh altogether. Let's look at a few of these settings. So first notice how the physics preference has already been set to CFD and the solver preference has been set to fluent. ANSYS has already tailored its meshing methods for our project and it knew this because we're working in the fluid flow, fluent analysis system. The main optimization here is that it automatically created tetrahedral cells which are better for CFD. Before making any changes to our mesh, let's see how many cells the default mesh contains. So we can see that in statistics. And you see that we have about 186,000 cells. Let's now expand sizing right here and change the user advanced size function to proximity and curvature. And this will make it deal with curved surfaces better, like the surface of our blade. Let's also change the relevance center to medium. This will make the elements a bit smaller everywhere in the mesh. And notice that these min and max sizes uh, they actually went down after we clicked medium instead of coarse. Okay, so we won't change any more settings here, so let's click on update. Let's take a look back at the statistics now. Hmm, so we have much more cells right now. I call them cells because they're the the names in CFD, they're called elements in FEA. Um, other than that, are you wondering what this crosshair-like shape is? So this is meant to help you get a better sense of the size of your elements. The larger circle represents the max size, which is actually also shown right here. This is the approximate size of the biggest cell in the model. The middle circle represents the max face size. And if you zoom very close to your mesh, you can actually see this smaller circle. And this represents the smallest cell face size in the model.